Hey there folks, welcome to Boating on a Budget. We made the tight Yorkshireman. And me Dawn. We're out again Dawn. We are. We're on our travels. We actually came out yesterday didn't we? But we just spent yesterday catching up on the bit of canal that we've already done. Yeah. Yeah. We're now heading off onto territory we've never been on before. We are. It's called the New Junction. I believe it was built about 150 years ago. Wow. But it is still in canal terms. The new. new. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we're heading up there, and then I think as plan over the next sort of ten days or so is first off we're going to swing down to Goole, aren't we? So we want to see about getting the boat out next year for re-blacking and things. Yeah. And then we're going to head over to Castleford, Lemon Lloyd Rock, Lemon Lloyd Rock Lock. What? <laughs> Easy for somebody to say, you but to not say, me. I'm not trying it. It's over that way anyway in West Yorkshire. So we've got about 10 days that we're now out for, haven't we, before we've got to be back at Armour in, in Rotherham. So like I say, up New Junction, over to Goul, across to Castleford, all that other place, <laughs> and then slowly work his way back down. Just as we come up here now, we're about to bear left, and in the past when we've come up here, we've bared right. Yeah. So we're now on that new section that we've not done before. We are. New ground. Isn't it exciting? Yeah. And as you can see up ahead, we've got our first little um, obstacle. And most people have probably heard of the Ponticillia Aqueduct. Yes. I managed to say a big word there without messing it up. The Ponticillia Aqueduct, which is down in Wales, which is that massive thing really high up and there's not a chance I'd ever go over it. I'm surprised you're not in bed now. I was going to say, don't like heights and I've not been looking forward to this because it is an aqueduct that goes over the River Don. So it's like Doncaster's version of the Ponticilliath. But it does still mean that you kind of look at each side and you've got a drop. And and if I stand on a stool, my <laughs> legs start shaking. So I'm not looking forward to this. Plus there's also, as you can see there, there's two guillotines that can come down so that when the river floods, it doesn't allow the water into the canal. So you've got to go under a big guillotine, then over an aqueduct, and then under another big guillotine. So that Nothing sounds to like, worry about then, is there? <laughs> sounds like right good fun to me, that. So brace yourself, let's see how we go. It weren't too bad, I suppose. I did take my mind off it by holding the camera and not, admit, not concentrating was, on it. So. I was terrified. <laughs> I really were. You know, it's only been there 150 years, and as far as I know, there's never been an accident there. What but possibly it, could go wrong. <laughs> it's still not good. But now we've got a little section. This new junction canal is about five miles long, but on there, I think there's four or five swing bridges and just one lock. And what we've been told is the easiest way to do it is one person stays on the boat and drives. One person runs along the towpath. And that'll be me. Runs from one lock or swing bridge or lift bridge to the next. So obviously each one's done in turn. Because by the time you've got back on the boat each time you're kind of getting back off. We've got some people there. So you're gonna run along the side of the canal, aren't you? Yes. You're not really gonna run though, are you? We're gonna get your e-bike out, your new bike, and yeah. you're gonna cycle along the side of the canal, going to each bit and getting it set for me. That's the theory anyway. We've never actually done any of these type of swing bridges and things though, have we? No. So we're not sure how that's gonna go. We can try it. Indeed. It's either gonna be plain sailing, literally, 
or chaos. One thing that always baffles me, and I don't know why nobody's ever sorted it out, is when you're approaching something that you've never done before, you don't know which side the lock landing's on. You don't know which side you should be getting off the boat. No, that's that's it. So as we're coming up here now, we can see that swing bridge in front of us. But do I need to moor up on the left or on the right? Why is there not just like a little sign on the side of the canal yeah. down here saying more, more right. left yeah. or more right? Again, the canal system's been operating for 300 years and it's never been a problem. Along comes me and finds a problem where they're in one. <laughs> this first swing bridge then, we've moored up and come to have a look, see how it works. And what are you thinking, Dawn? Pretty straightforward. Yeah, looks to be sort of more or less the same as that lift bridge down there, doesn't yeah. it? Fairly simple instructions, Just... follow it step by step. And then as you can see down there, you can maybe just make out, we've got two lift bridges further on. So this is like we say, I'm gonna come through this first one, I'll moor up here, and then we'll get your bike out. You can cycle off. Go on then. So as we can see, the bridge is swinging round. Before I crash, I will get in there. It is quite a breezy day and it is blowing the boat about a bit. I've got my excuse in. little signal to each other to say all okay. Not looking good, is it?
This was definitely different to anything we'd ever encountered before. You've got a large lock, probably approximately 200 foot long, and in the middle of that, there's a swing bridge with a road going across it. Initially, it had Dawn quite confused, because normally when you get to the control panel, you have to put your key in and turn it on. But there was no keyhole to put the key in. So after much head scratching, she waited for me to arrive and we had a little look round and worked out that the first thing you had to do was actually open the swing bridge. This then meant that the road itself would be closed for a good 10 to 15 minutes whilst we got the boat through the lock. Quite fortunately, it's not a very busy road and no cars came whilst we were doing it. We're off. done the various swing bridges, the lift bridges and that funny lock with the swing bridge in between. Not sure what footage we got of that on the GoPro but we might on the way back so yeah. show a bit more of that because it's quite interesting that anyway you've got like a lock and a bridge in the middle and I'll took, work one we out, will they? took for a bit of head scratching <laughs> to work it out but yeah we're past that we're now sort of coming towards the end of this new junction se section of canal we then swing a right and head over to the old but as you'll notice, we're sat on his chairs, aren't we? We are. And we mentioned these on the last video, that people call them suicide seats. Because obviously, if we were to eat something in the water now, the rudder had hit it, and it'd spin this round, and it'd... Knock either one of us off. Knock us into water. So what I've done is I've made a little bracket that's down here, and that stops the tiller from swinging too far. Just means I can just steer it now, sort of a little bit left and right, but it'll not swing right across. I'll show you a bit of footage of that. The basics to this system then is dead simple. When we need to be able to move the tiller around all the way across its arc, for things like when we're mooring up and going into locks and things, it can swing perfectly free. But then what we can do is lift this little bracket up that I made and that stops the tiller moving too far one way or the other. Therefore meaning, it's nice and safe and that tiller can't swing round and knock us off our chairs. Just a little bit of box section steel, a few minutes welding, a couple of nuts and bolts, jobs are good and As we approach the end of the new junction canal, immediately in front of us is a large reservoir. As you can see there were a number of sailing boats on there at the time, taking advantage of the high winds. Straight in front of us there you can see how the reservoir and canal are joined directly together. 
There's no locks or barriers in between the two. The water flows freely in between canal and reservoir. As we were doing that turn there onto yet another new canal for us. We're now on the Air and Calder Canal. There's a brood in there. And I've put my shorts on. I've put your shorts on, the <laughs> sun's shining. Yeah, so, uh, and while the sun's shining, we've got the jackery out, haven't we, with the solar panels, and we're now recharging your bike battery. Yep. So uh, that'll be charged up. We might even uh, go for a little ride around Gull later on it. We'll see when we get there what's happening. One thing we have realised, though, is we need to go to the shop for some food and it's Sunday so we're not going to be in Gull before all the shops shut so what, oh, we're just going to say so what we're going to have to do for tea and drink going to have to be pub didn't really want to yeah right yeah. yeah I think we've got sort of I think it's a couple of three hours cruise now down into Gull uh, and basically no locks or anything along the way basically having to wait for you. I was just in like neutral and the wind were just pushing me along so like the ultimate tight Yorkshireman. We were a wind powered vessel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah if we got to sail up we could just sail our way into Gull. And today's interesting fact just happened to see that Robbie Cumming who obviously quite a famous YouTuber and also television star tweeted earlier because he's been in Gull recently and apparently the name Gull is derived from the word for, I think it was open sewage. Nice. So I'm treating you for your holiday. We're going to the town of open sewage. 